Hello everybody, I'm Sharp and Blade, and in this video we are going to take a look at the CRKT Cinco by Richard Rogers. So currently this is available on Integrity and I's website, which is who I bought this from. I'll leave a link in the description below to their website directly to this knife where you can use discount code SharpenBlade to receive 10% off. So it retails for $79.99 Canadian and with my discount code you can pick it up for $71.99. So infomercial is over. <laughs> uh, let's get into the knife itself. So there's a lot to like with this knife and there's one thing that I don't really like with this knife and there's a little couple little nitpicks that aren't really that big a deal but we'll start with some specs so it has a blade length of 2.89 inches a handle length of 4.05 inches overall length of 6.94 inches it weighs 3.1 ounces blade thickness of 0 0.11 inches and a handle thickness of 3 eighths of an inch so just a little bit less than half an inch that you see usually in the handle thickness and uh, overall it's a very slim slender sleek uh, very nice looking kind of a gentleman's carry knife so to compare the size with say a rat model one you'll see that uh, it's very small compared to that and a rat model two it's uh, small compared to that <laughs> uh, yeah it's like I say it's a small it's a smaller knife it's not uh, too small by any means I guess it depends on how big your hand is but um, I didn't find it too small but I'll get into that in the ergos in a few minutes so it's a drop point blade style or blade shape it's got a nice swedge up here I really like the look of this uh, blade it's a very nice shape um, very attractive it's a flat grind uh, it has stainless steel handles it's kind of a bolstery frame lock kind of a setup here uh, everything's done in this black stone watch which looks very nice it's got a G10 kind of a beige tan G10 overlay on the scales so that's very attractive as well it has a nice looking pocket clip I had to bend it out a bit it's a very stiff pocket clip so I had to kind of bend it out just the tiniest amount to allow my uh, jean material to slide through here easily it doesn't have much room until you get to about here and then it's uh, it's fine but uh, it looks very nice though same kind of a setup as on the symmetry that I reviewed a little while ago so it's uh, I do like the look of this pocket clip however you know if you have really thick pants for whatever reason you might have trouble getting this in and out of your pocket now there is a slight texture to the G10 um, it did prevent the uh, knife from sliding in and out of the pocket easily at first until, like I say, I bent it out, then it was fine. And I didn't have to bend it out much, just a little bit. So, uh, yeah, no problems there. It works the very best. It's got a nice lanyard hole here that doesn't really interrupt the flow of the knife. It adds a little bit of extra length onto the end of the handle here, so that's kind of nice. And it also provides quite a big hole to stick your lanyard in if you so desire. The pocket clip is not reversible because of the overall shape of it. And they used button screws on the G10 here and on the pivot. So normally, I don't, well, I don't really care for these on here either. I wish they were just the flat flush screws, uh, but I normally don't like button screws, but I don't mind them on this simply because usually they're sunk into the inlay quite a bit and you get a lot of debris that can sit in here. Well, I shouldn't say a lot, but you can get some debris that sits in there. These are pretty much flush, like they sit up above. So the end of the dome shape, the edge of the dome, 
sits flush with the inlay so crud doesn't get in there as easily so uh, I guess that's a positive you can take out of having something like this but it would look a lot nicer just with the flat screws on there but that's just a tiny nitpick I will say however that every screw on here even the pivot screw is T6 which is annoying <laughs> uh, it's bad enough when you have you know your body screws in T6 but when everything including the pivot screw is T6 that's eh, less than ideal but uh, it's not a big deal but it is a lot easier to strip a T6 than a T8 so uh, it would be nice if everything was T8 but anyways another sm small nitpick there's a big nitpick coming up shortly <laughs> so stay tuned for that um, it's on IKBS bearings so it has a very nice, this is probably, of all the CRKTs I've had, I say this has the nicest action of the CRKT knives that I can remember. I don't have a very good memory, so that might not mean anything. <laughs> but it is a very nice, smooth, snappy action. So enough talk, let's see what it's like. Very nice. Now. Here is the nitpick. The, uh, not nitpick, this is my complaint. <laughs> and take this with a grain of salt because this is not every knife. Not every one of these Cinco's is gonna have this problem. This could just be an isolated problem with mine. Now, the geometry of the lock bar, it's a little too short, so it, slides over quite far now I'm guessing it's just a little too short maybe that's not the problem but I would just to me it makes sense that it's just a little it's cut a little too short so it slides over too far and you essentially have quite a bit of it's not really lock stick it's just like the lock is stuck <laughs> now if you take it easy on on the deployment of the blade no problem whatsoever not a bit of lock stick it's the very best however so you can see that I don't know if the camera will pick up this slight movement I guess maybe not there is a slight yeah you can kind of see it there here better if I aligned it easy yeah <laughs> here we go so there is slight movement in this if you apply pressure to the back of the blade and wiggle the blade, you can wiggle the blade and it also moves the lock bar. So it's not a really confident lockup unless you come on to her and you've got it all the way, pretty much all the way over to this side of the blade. And then it's locked up solid. It's not going anywhere. But however, it's got that problem. So not that's not great. <laughs> and this is just a warranty. So I could send this in for warranty. And I'm sure they'd fix it. And everything would be hunky-dory and be all set. However, I don't want to pay to ship this knife to get it fixed. <laughs> this is an $80 knife. If it cost me at least $20 to ship this to CRKT to get it fixed. I don't want to do that. So to me, it's not a big enough problem for me to have to spend the extra money to get it fixed. I will just be careful with it when I use it. I did use it. There's no problems with it. I cut quite a bit of cardboard with it. It's an excellent slicer. It works really well, uh, but I didn't have any problems, you know, using it. The, it didn't fail on me. So no complaints there yet, <laughs> and there might not be. If I do need to use it quite hard, I'll just rocket it out, and then away you go. It's it's in there. It's not going anywhere. But uh, you know, this is a gentleman's knife. Oh, that's lovely. This is a gentleman's knife, so it's not something you got to use really hard, anyways. So take that how you will. It's. Uh, not great but I would still recommend this knife 
don't get me wrong, I would rather that didn't have that problem, but don't avoid this knife because of that, because CRKT puts out so many knives that obviously some things are going to slip through the crack. Uh, quality control can't keep up with everything, unfortunately, and uh, even though this is not ideal, this is not a deal breaker for me, so I would still recommend the knife. Now, there's a few other things I should mention. The uh, so I will first I'll point this out here. I think it'd be easier to show. So the grind is done very well on this knife, except for right here. You can see it kind of curves down. So it gives it like a recurve look. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Uh, you can just sharpen that out though easily enough. Like I say, the rest of the grind is pretty even. It's pretty nice. They did a pretty good job on it, except for right here. So that little frowny face there comes around and you can feel it right here. So that's, that's another little problem. I don't think you could cut yourself because it's just a little point sticking up. Um, unless you like jam your finger in there for whatever reason, but like I say, you can sharpen that out and then it wouldn't be a problem anymore. It's just, I don't know why it's like that in the first place. That could, again, isolated maybe just to this knife, but uh, that's another thing I figured I should point out. And there's a couple of little sharp spots here. There's a sharp spot right here where it's... Now when I say sharp, I don't mean it's going to cut you. But I just mean it's square and they didn't really round it off much. So you can just hit that. This is just uh, 2CR stainless steel, I think they call it. So it's pretty soft. So you could just sand that down a little bit, round that off. It's not going to cut you. Like I'm going with this now and there's no blood. So <laughs> it's okay, but it's, it is square. Same with back here. These look wonderful, but they're square and you can feel them. You can't feel them when you're holding the knife, but you can feel them when you stick your finger on them. So just don't stick your finger on them or sand them and you'll be all right. Okay, so I didn't talk about ergonomics yet. So let's talk about ergonomics. Like I say, this knife is not the biggest knife. It's got a slightly over four inch handle. So that's kind of in the range that I like. I kind of like the four inch, four and a half inch handle length. So this is still not too small for me, but it might be too small for some people. I wear a medium sized glove, so, um, you know, so you just get a little better idea of hand size. The ergonomics are good. It's a very neutral shape. So ergonomics are good in my left hand or my right hand. Uh, the pocket clip, normally that causes a hot spot. This didn't cause a hot spot for me, so it just kind of went luckily right in a spot that I don't really feel it that much. You can feel it, but it's not a hot spot. This may be a hot spot for people with large hands because it is sticking up quite a ways. Now, since they're button screws, they're curved, so they're not going to be super hot spotty. <laughs> They're not going to dig in too bad on your hand, but the overall clip may uh, see like when I hold it, it's past my, it's past my hand, so I don't feel it. But if you had big hands, like say, and it was, you know, you had like big hands, <laughs> and it was here, you would probably feel it, and it would probably dig in pretty bad. Uh, like I can feel it pretty bad right there. Again, you might not but uh, I'm just guessing that you would because of where it lands on my on your hand, but uh, you probably would rather have bigger knives anyway, so you might not worry about that. Anyways, <laughs> just that's just another thing to keep in mind. So uh, this might be a hot spot for relatively large hands, but for if you have um, medium size uh, hands or smaller, you probably won't have any problems with that. I didn't have any problems with it but everyone's hands are different. Um, but overall, like I say, um, I still recommend this knife. It is a good knife. 
like everything they did, like the design is great. The action, like I said, is fantastic. I don't like that sometimes you have to really fight the lock bar, uh, but it's, that's just an isolated incident, hopefully. Uh, it's such a snappy action and it's so smooth. And it's really not even broken in yet. I have a feeling it would break in a lot better as time goes on. But uh, it is very smooth. It's not drop shutty, but it's not a huge blade either. So it may never be drop shutty, but it's just super smooth. And the ergos are, you know, nice for what it is. Uh, just, you know, it's a nice, plain, neutral grip on it. And uh, it is solidly built. You know, it is a solid knife. Uh, I wouldn't say the fit and finish is perfect because of the problems I had with it, but it is solid. I'd say it's definitely worth the uh, $80. And it's definitely worth the $72 if you use my discount code. Uh, so the price of admission is great. Uh, as far as it being a CRKT goes, I know that's sounds like I'm going to bash it, but if you didn't know it was CRKT, like if you didn't know, if it didn't have this mark on the blade and you pass it to someone, I don't know if they would know it's a CRKT. I think people would be surprised that it's a CRKT because it is such, such a nice, such a nice knife. I just wish it didn't have this problem. I know I can get it fixed. Like I say, I don't want to. It's going to stay in the collection because it looks so nice. And one thing I found weird, they got lots of markings on this, right? They got, you know, Rogers Design, Cinco, item number, IKBS bearing logo, CRKT. Where's D2? It's a D2 blade. Where is the D2 logo? They don't mind sticking HCR13 on here, but they don't put D2 unless I missed it. You know, come on guys. <laughs> You finally got some D, uh, D2 on here. Just just mark it on there. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, this is going to be a long video. I've gone on much longer than I thought I would. Really impressive. You know, even with the problems I had. I have with it. Uh, I'm still really impressed by this knife. And I honestly. Uh, it, I, it's not on YouTube. There's only a couple other reviews on YouTube. And I rarely see it on Instagram, and I think it really deserves more attention than it's getting. So uh, give it a chance. Hopefully you don't have the same lock lockup issue I have. Uh, you might have the same problem with the grind, but like I say, easily sharpened out of there. But anyways, uh, give it a try. They're in stock on Integrity Knives website. Uh, make sure you check them out. Thanks very much for watching the video. Take care.